Hey friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. In this video, we are creating my March weekly spreads in my bullet journal. So if you haven't seen my March plan with me video yet, I will link it in the cards and in the description below. My March theme is flower fields and I'm really excited and happy about all the spreads I made for this month's bullet journal setup. So I really hope you like them too. But let's get into this video. For the first weekly spread I worked on here, I wanted to try out and use a different layout this time. I feel like I'm often doing the same layouts over and over again, just because I usually don't feel like spending too much time on my weekly spreads, but this time I wanted to try out something new. I often just take my sketchbook and start brainstorming for ideas for my weekly spreads, and this is what I did this time too. First, I always try to find the placement for either six or seven daily boxes that I always include in my weeklies. And then I also try to find the place for the main character of the spread, which is usually my painting. But yeah, this is what I came up with for this weekly spread. You don't obviously see the layout itself yet, but I have a big painting here. I am pretty sure this is almost the size of my whole cover page painting, if I'm not mistaken. But I decided to go for a little bit bigger paintings for my weeklies this time because I just had that extra time on my hands. And to be honest, I needed some distraction of all the horrific things happening in the world. I'm sure many of you have felt the same. And by the way, regarding that, I will leave some resources and places to donate for people in Ukraine if you haven't done that already. So definitely go check that out in the description as well. But about this painting, so there's a flower field, of course, and then there's this little cabin in the background with some forest in the back as well. I chose to go with a blue sky and then for the forest or the greenery behind the house, I just chose this really dark green color almost like a black color and then i just painted some details on top of that with a darker green i painted the bottom part of the field and i also added a couple of these darker blobs to the field that i kind of blended to the lighter green color and then i just took my brush and started creating these small grass-like strokes throughout the whole field I also made the grass in the top part of the field a lot smaller and in the bottom obviously bigger. Whenever I'm painting any flower fields or grass, this is usually the time that I get a little bit panicked. And for you, it might seem that I know exactly what I'm doing, but trust me, I'm not. I'm really confused about painting grass, so this is always a scary part to me, but this turned out to be surprisingly good. And also, if you are painting this, you're going to be covering most of the painting with flowers anyway. So definitely don't stress about it or try to make it perfect. I started off by making the flowers first in the upper part of the field and obviously they are really small because it's so far away so I just took some white gouache and made these really small tiny dots to that part and then started making them bigger as we go to the bottom of the painting. In this painting I have a lot of poppies but I also left most of these dots white so you could think that this is like daisies or just some random white flowers. I actually asked for recommendations of flowers to include in my weeklies in my latest video and I got a lot of good recommendations as I thought I would. And more realistic poppies was actually one of them. So you who commented that, you will probably recognize yourself. So thanks for the good recommendation. I obviously included poppies in my content planner spread in my setup as well, but it was fun to work on a little bit more realistic poppies this time since they were a little bit more on the abstract side, I guess. Next, I was working on the house that was in the background of this painting and I made the left side of the house a little bit lighter in color and the right side a little bit darker, so I would kind of imagine the sun hitting the house from the left side. I just chose some brown colors and made it really simple without adding any details except some windows and a door. But I didn't want to spend that much time on it, so I just wanted to keep it really simple. Next, I took my red paint and I started painting the poppies on top of the white blobs that I had added on the painting before. 
And if you are wondering why I made the poppies white first, it is because the red is gonna pop a lot more when you add it on top of white gouache instead of the green one. I started adding some details to the flowers by taking a little bit darker red tone and added that especially to the center of the flower and to the bottom. I looked at some reference pictures just to see how the petals normally go and I have to say poppies look really weird. <laughs> With the darker color, I added a little stem to all of the flowers in the front and also added some of that white gouache in between them to make these small little white flowers there too. But for the layout itself, I took my 03 Figma Micron and made six boxes on the right side of the spread, two overlapping the painting. I really liked how the painting was kind of behind the boxes and yeah i really love this layout and i will definitely be using this in the future as well i bought this set of alphabetical stamps and i wanted to use it here but i'm not really good at it and it was really messy so i just decided to cut these craft paper rectangles and glue them on top of the upper part of the boxes and then just Write the days of the week with the same typewriter font on top that I use in my March setup. But that's it for the first weekly spread and now we can go to the next one. For the next weekly spread layout, I chose something a lot more familiar. I have used this layout a lot in the past and you probably notice it as well. So this weekly spread is definitely all about boxes and many of them are for daily logs and events and tasks and some of them are for paintings. This weekly actually has five paintings, so as is, this is definitely not for everyone, but you can definitely change it up however you want. You can paint only two paintings if you want to, or you can even add more. I have even seen two weeks included in this spread, so definitely go and do whatever you want with it. But in this one, I chose to add different kind of daisy flower fields. Since there are five paintings in this spread, I wanted to make sure that all of the paintings were really different from each other. I started off by taping all of the paintings and painting first the sky and crown for all of them. I painted one of the paintings really close up to the flowers and one of them is really high up and there's a couple of paintings that have the flowers kind of coming from the corner of the painting and then one of the paintings is almost like a little version of my cover page. By the way, if the voiceover sounds a little bit different in this video, this is actually the first time ever that I am recording a voiceover without a script. I often have this multiple page script for my voiceovers, but this time I decided to just leave that out completely just to have this a little bit more relaxed and also without having to spend hours and hours just writing that script. People have always said that I'm really bad at explaining things, so I guess I'm kind of challenging myself here and trying to get my thoughts in order and making sure that they come out of my mouth making some kind of sense. I just sometimes struggle with my weekly spread videos because I have already spent so many hours making my initial plan with me video that sometimes my motivation for these videos are a bit low. So I thought maybe if I decided not to write the script at all, maybe it would make the process a little bit easier. And to be honest, it has, but this is also really stressful for me. So I really hope this is working fine. <music> 
like I did in my initial setup, I painted the middle part of the daisies with an orange color and then I just darkened the left side of that middle part. Since there are 5 paintings in this weekly spread, I decided to make them pretty fast because obviously you won't be able to see some of those smaller details. The paintings are also really small itself, so I left most of the details out. I just took white gouache for the daisies and then painted the root of the petal a little bit darker with a grey tone, but that's pretty much it. By the way, all of my used products are listed in the description of this video. I used gouache paint for this, mainly from Royal Talents and Windsor and & Newton, and I also used Arteza detail brushes for all the small details. I definitely needed those this month, especially on the flowers. Some of the flowers were extremely small, so <laughs> they came in handy. My notebook is from Archer and & Olive, and I also used some of their Acrylograph pens for this setup. And for all the line work, I use my Pigma Microns. But as always, if something is missing from the description box, just write me a DM or comment down below and I will try to update you as soon as I can. Due to everything that's happening in the world, I have felt really anxious and scared and I've definitely needed that distraction in my life, so I've watched a lot of TV shows and movies and YouTube videos, but if you have any good recommendations on documentaries or docu-series, definitely leave them down below in the comments. Those real life stories have been the most interesting to me for some reason, so I would definitely want to watch more. But if you are in the same situation as I am and you're craving for some distraction in your life, I'm also going to give you three documentary recommendations. They're all really different from each other, but I think they're all really interesting and I couldn't really look away when I was watching them. First, I want to recommend the Woodstock 99 documentary that is on HBO. It was super interesting and also kind of scary. <laughs> And then two Netflix documentaries. The other one is a docu-series that is a pretty long one. And it's called Wild Wild Country. And the other one is The Tinder Swindler. I feel like everyone is talking about that, so you might have already seen it. But they are both really good and interesting, but definitely really different from each other. I decided to cut out the footage where I created the paintings on the left side of the spread just to kind of keep this video a little bit shorter. I was pretty much doing the same thing in all of these paintings so I really hope you don't mind that. Next I just peeled off the tapes and started creating the layout itself. Every time I can include craft paper in this layout I am doing it so I just took my craft paper and cut these rectangles out for my boxes. I glued them in place and for the rest I just outlined them with my Figma Micron. I'm using a glue tape roller to glue them in but you can also use a glue stick if you don't have that. I took my Muchi gel pen and added this small calendar to the right side of the spread. Again, I took my 005 and 03 Pigma Microns and wrote the days of the week on the boxes. I'm really happy I tried out a different font this time, and I think this typewriter font goes perfectly with these paintings in my March setup. Like I said in my Plan With Me video, for some reason I get this romantic vibe of the letters and the paintings together. But that is it for this weekly, and next we are going to set up the last two weeks for March. And since there are five weeks instead of four in March, I decided to include the last two in my Dutch door spread. I decided to make the Dutch door vertically, so I pretty much just cut the middle page in half. As I often do with my Dutch door spreads, I wanted to make these circles kind of popping out of the cut page, so I just cut around them when I was cutting the page in half. I decided to cut the page like this because there is a painting on the right side of the spread and you will be able to see the painting from both sides of the Dutch door. 
On the upper left side of the spread, I decided to add a small calendar and this time I decided to work a little bit more on my stamping skills and stamped the word weeks and added the week numbers 12 and 13. All of the stamped letters didn't turn out to be as dark as I wanted, so I just took my fine liner and darkened some of them up a bit. I again just took a piece of craft paper and started cutting out these circle shapes for my dates. Later, I wrote the dates on top of them when I glued them into the page. Next, I started working on the painting on the right side of the spread. This painting is definitely a lot different from my other paintings this month because this doesn't actually have a flower field. First, I just used this light grey tone to make the background for the whole painting. I still wanted to make sure that this painting is cohesive and works with the other art that I have made this month, so I chose this light grey tone for the background and this is kind of the same color as I've used for the sky of all of my paintings this month. Next, I removed the tape and sketched the flowers that I was going to paint on top of the background. I've actually never painted anything like this, but for this spread I decided to paint some peach colored roses. And this is again a recommendation that was left in my last video's comments, so thank you so much for the person who recommended this. Before we get any further, I want to say that this flower painting and composition is inspired by a photograph that I saw on Unsplash. The photo was taken by Nadia Bloshenko. I hope I didn't put your name completely, but if I did, I am really sorry. They are an amazing Ukrainian photographer and I will leave all their socials and the Unsplash profile in the description if you want to also look at the photo or just any of their other photos. But I did actually invert the picture because it didn't really work with my layout so I just basically used the same composition and everything but just inverted. Like I said, I had never painted roses before, so this definitely was a bit of a challenge, but I was trying to look at the reference photo as well as I could to see where the light hits and what parts are more in the shadow and also to see what shape the petals are because that was also one part that I was kind of confused about when I was first just looking at the photo. I mixed this pink peachy color first and added some more black and some more white to it depending on what part of the petals I was painting. First, I just took this lighter color and tried to look where I could see that color in the reference photo and I started adding that color to those parts of the sketch. Pretty much as a rule for this painting, I painted the outer edges of the petals lighter and then the parts that are underneath some other petals I painted with a darker color because obviously the light doesn't hit those parts as well. The first layers of all of these flowers were pretty messy, I just wanted to make sure that I get the shape right and add a little bit of shadow so then later on I can kind of deepen the shadows and blend the colors together a lot better. I did the completely same thing to all of the smaller flowers as well and then I started deepening the shadows. As you can see, this painting definitely needs darker shadows because even the parts that are underneath other petals are still pretty light in color, so I added this really dark red color to those spots and I think the painting immediately started to look a lot more alive. Making these kinds of shadows is definitely all about blending, so I did it by taking a little bit of that color and added it to the spot where I wanted it to be, and then took a little bit of water to my brush, dragging that color to the lighter color underneath. I also painted a couple of buds to this painting. I think it balanced this scene really nicely and also made it more interesting when the flowers were in a different state of opening. When the flowers itself were painted, I took this dark green color and started adding the stems to my flowers. I didn't want to spend much time on this, so I just made some super simple lines and also just added these droopy leaves to any spots on the stems that I felt like were a bit empty. But 
that is it for the painting and now we can proceed to the layout itself. I didn't include this part in the video but I also glued those craft paper circles on the right side of the spread as well next to the painting. Then I take my 02 Figma Micron Fineliner to draw some lines to separate the days from each other in the weekly. I was really struggling with what to do with the left side of this whole spread because it was really empty. I tried out so many different things but in the end I just made these sections for notes and to-dos. I took the same color as I used in my flower painting and I started to make these lines that I painted on every other dot space. I still don't think it looks perfect or anything like that but at least it's not as empty as it was before. But with that we are getting to the end of this video and I'm just quickly going to flip through all the spreads I made in this one. I really hope you liked this video and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and also tell me which of these spreads turned out to be your favorite in the comments if you are still here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!